Hey folks, it's a little while since I posted it because I've been having too much fun with Houdini uh, 20.5 in, and in particular with Copernicus. It's a great addition, I think, to Houdini's overall dual set. And hopefully I'll get a chance to post some more tutorials using uh, cups and tying it up to the rest of Houdini. So in this little setup here, I'm just going to try and do some decals. And I'm actually going to use the uh, texture mask paint, which I've used in some of my previous tutorials. So and we're going to try and create something like this. So we can just paint on a decal uh, where we like it. We can do this in 3D space here, and we don't have to worry about discontinuities across UV islands or UV seams or anything like that. Uh, so I should just add, as it's a brush-based approach, it's non-procedural, right? So you're not going to be able to swap this out for another image later. Uh, you can clear it, of course, and you can just go and paint it again, okay? Uh, so let's dive in. So I'll throw down a geonode here. I'm going to dive in, I'm going to put down the pig head. I'll put it up to uh, hard here and I'll turn off the shader and I guess let's just put down a split node here. We can split off the eyes from the head. Let's put down a subdivide and let's put down null. And I'll we'll just call this big. Let's put down a comp net and let's dive into our comp net. Let's put down a sub import. And I'll put down a rasterize because we want to turn it into some pixels. We want to go and look for our pig. And bring that in. And when we're bringing it in, we need to decide what space we want it in. So I don't want it in world space. I want it in its UV space. So now that we're in UV space, I want to see my attributes. So we can use a rasterize geo for that. This one should be going into geometry here. Now we've got our alpha. Now you can do lots of really funky stuff uh, by bringing in attributes from SOPs into COPs, but I'm going to keep this as simple as I possibly can. Uh, so I'm going to put that into a constant. Uh, in COPs, we have to be aware of our signature or our type. Uh, so I actually want this to be RGB because I'm going to use this to add color to my pig. Let's just put down a null here just to kind of get everything set up. We'll just call this C for color. So I'd like to see my uh, color on my pig. So I have to make a decision where I want to have my material. So I can put down a preview material in COPS and that's how most people are doing it. Uh, and this keeps you in the kind of COPS context or the COPS mindset. And then I can bring down a SOP import here and I can say use external source and let's bring in our pig. And this time I'm just gonna plug from geo into geo and I should be able to see my color on my pig. Right, so that's the way most people are doing it. It is just worth pointing out, you do have a preview material at SOPS level as well. Uh, if you were doing a lot of stuff at SOPS, um, like with clever attribute stuff at the SOPS level, it might make more sense to have the material out here. I'm gonna keep it in COPS. Now what I wanna do is take a look at setting up my decal. So I'm gonna come back up here to SOPS level and I am going to put down a Texture mask paint over here, and I'm going to put down a null for this as well. And we'll just call this out brush. And let's just paint something onto our pig. And I want to get this information over into my uh, cop as a mask. So coming out of the texture mask paint, then we have geometry uh, coming out through that nodule there. And actually, the one we're after is this one on the right hand side, which is mask volumes. So really what we want is to try and bring a volume or a height field over into COPS. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, so let's go back over into our COP here. So to bring height field information into COPS, our initial setup is somewhat similar to uh, when we're rasterizing attributes. So we need to put down a SOP import here and we can point it. In this case, we're gonna go to outbrush. Then we're going to put down our rasterize setup. Again, we want to be in UV space so that these match up. But because of the height field, uh, to get it into pixels, we have to use a geo to layer cop. So that should get our information from our texture mask paint over into cops. So we can use that mask to create our decal, right? So let's make a little bit of space here. And we're just gonna call this maybe a uh, pig color. And we'll put down another uh, constant for our color for our decals. 
so let's change it to um, RGB and let's put it over to red, right? So our decal is going to be red. So let's just try plugging that in. Again, I could do this using uh, blend nodes as well. Maybe we'll keep the, the graph as simple as we can. So we'll just call this, uh, so we'll just call this decal color here. Now, if we go and put our flag on the end, we can see that, yes, this paint that we put down is now coming through our cop, right? Just a quick note, if you wanna be able to see various points in your graph and the final result, and that's very useful to be able to do, you can use this little guy here, it's called the footprint. Uh, if we wanna be able to see them both a little bit more clearly, maybe what we can do is, uh, let's just pin this for one second so I can see both at the same time. And I'll just go back up here and we'll put down a transform node. Uh, just here above our note and maybe if we move our little piggy just down here like this now we can see both at the same time uh, so I can move forward and back in my graph and I can uh, keep an eye on what's happening in the end results both at the same time we have our basic setup done now but it's a little bit boring so let's try and spice it up just a little bit let's go and put down a height to normal this guy here is a monolayer already. You can see the signature there. So we can go in there as height and let's plug this guy into our normal slot. So now you can see we're getting some um, offset, some normal offset. Uh, so it just makes it feel like it's painted on a little bit more. Uh, so we can come down to normal. So we'll, lower, we'll put this down to 0 0.1 for now. Of course, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on with the normals until you have some lights in your scene. Uh, so let's just jump up to the top here and we will throw down an environment light, and I'm gonna throw down a distance light as well. And into our environment light, let's put an environment map. So we just jump in here, and Houdini ships with some HDRs. So I'm going to pick the uh, Skylake Garage here, and for my distance light here, I'm just gonna dial this down a little bit, uh, just so we have some sort of uh, direction to our light. And we can come back in, and let's take a look at our copnet and we'll put our display onto our preview material just here so that has helped a little bit to uh, bring out the normal map but our brush marks are a little bit boring so let's go take a look at our texture mask paint now i'm not particularly promoting this workflow for painter style workflow i think it's uh, still not interactive enough for that but for doing decals i think it'll work really quite well uh, you can see our paint work at the moment is a little bit boring uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to change it from paint over here and I'm gonna change it over to stamp. And that's gonna give me access to uh, an alpha, right? If I clear this away, and we make the brush a little bit bigger, you can see I am painting this mandrel picture. If I was to go back into our comp net now, you can see that that information is being passed down through our graph. Now, in this particular case, I don't wanna paint monkeys. Um, uh, what I wanna do instead is design my own decal. Uh, so let's put down an SDF shape and let's plug that into an sdf to mono so that's to turn it from an sdf into a black and white image so here's our sdf and let's change it maybe over to uh i go compound and let's go rounded x we'll just do this one for now and this is what it's going to look like uh, when it's black and white now i'd like to have a little bit of a bevel on it so if i open up the shape drop down here and i change the shape value from constant over to iso distance I should get a fall off ramp. So that can help to define a bevel. And I'm gonna flip it the other way because uh, I wanna keep the white bit. And now I can come in and we can play around with the beveled edge just a little bit. So maybe we get something like this. So let's call it alpha out. So hit control C on that just to copy the address. And then let's go back up to our texture mass paint over here and into where it says alpha image file, you can hit control V there, and you need to put OP colon in front of that so that it evaluates. And now we should be able to paint with using that alpha. So I'm gonna jump back out into 3D space here, and I'm gonna clear that. And now you can see I am painting my cops based alpha onto my pig. Now the default setup for the brush is to try and paint in world space. And you can see some of the issues that we run into if I just clear it here. And you can see that it is painting on the alpha for the polygons that are directly facing the brush, but not for ones that are uh, 
turning away from the brush. So I found that it might be more useful to turn it over to the screen here. And now that will print on like uh, an alpha. So you'll have to make your choice there depending on what you're trying to do. So if we go and take a look at our cop net now, you can see our decal has got pumped true, right? Um, so what we can do, um, just to be able to visualize the final results on our texture mask paint here, if we open up visualization, uh, we can turn off show geometry. So the brush is now uh, going to paint onto the geometry here, but I want to see the end results. So let's put the display flag over here. And now I can go and start painting on my decals. Now, depending on what you're, might, what you're trying to do, you might turn on mirroring here. And now we can paint decals on both sides. And the big advantage to this, of course, is that we can change the size on the fly. We can change the spacing on the fly, uh, the opacity, etc. So the fact that we can build our own shapes in cops that we can use as decals to paint onto our meshes could be quite useful. And I could see people building out a little library of different shapes that they might want to use for sci-fi or for branding or whatever. So what if you would like to use uh, an image? So I have downloaded some files already and these images do not belong to me. I downloaded them quite a while ago because they are pretty awesome. But I managed to do a reverse image search on this Artist Ninja site here. And I found the original artist, or at least I think I have. And it is this guy here. So it's Tattoos by Don. Um, so just a shout out to him. Love the work. And hopefully you don't mind too much uh, me, me using your image for some educational content. Uh, if you do, let me know and I can, I can rip it down. Um, but I use this image because it's beautiful, but also because it has some very strong black and white shapes, which should hopefully hold up fairly well for our example here. So what we need to do is prep this just a little bit, remap it, and you can think of a remap as basically a levels. I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit, and this is just to get rid of the, the paper feel at the back. And then I am going to put down another remap. And this, you could use an invert as well, but I prefer to use a remap. I'm just going to remap the ranges or flip the ranges because I want to keep the white. You can see I'm getting a little bit of a line there, so we need to put down a crop as well. I'm just going to crop the very top of the image. You can see I'm getting some lines at the edge here. That's because the image is wrapping. So I'll just change the border to constant here. And I might tighten it up just a little bit just to try and bring out the shapes just a little bit more. Maybe something like this and maybe we'll put a little bit of a blur in there just as well just to soften it off ever so slightly and I'll lower my blur. Let's half this. So I'm going to plug this guy into my alpha out here. Now keep in mind this is brush based so it's not procedural. So you know I uh, oh, need to put my display, display flag back over on my preview material but you'll see that on my preview material this hasn't updated right so it's not procedural in that sense. Uh, so what I need to do is come back over to my texture mask paint here and just hit clear and let's make the brush nice and big and now I can paint on that decal. So I'm going to get quite a lot of detail coming through from the image and you can see it is just raised up just a little bit. That's the normal map kind of playing through. It's looking quite well. Just to finish it out, let's take a quick shot at making it feel a bit more like a sticker maybe. Uh, really what we want to control is our specular roughness, right? So specular roughness will be expecting a map with mid gray values and then your metalness map will be more black and white or more binary. The way I like to do it is convert over to mono first. Then I'm going to put down a remap here. And I'm going to use this as a mask for a blend. And I want to use this image here as a mask. So the reason I like to use the mask is I want to have quite fine control over the values that are going to go in the brighter areas and the darker areas because roughness maps can be quite sensitive. So I'm going to put down a constant here and we'll just duplicate that by holding alt. This will go into the foreground. This will go into the background and then the blend will go over to my roughness. So my remap is going to control this mask and in theory my mask should be more black and white. 
But what I'll find is that adjusting these values can be kind of tricky. It's quite useful to use an equalize node and an equalize node will stretch the range from black to white. So it'll refit the range to go between zero and one. And that's quite useful for uh, very tight ranges like what we've got here. It might be quite useful for very large ranges like what you might get out of a height field. So now I can just use my remap for further tweaking, right? So now it's much easier to use my remap. I've got a much wider range of values to work with. So if I come back up here to my blend, then both of these at the moment are set to one. So let's set one of them to black and the other to white. So I've got good control over these values. Again, I can control, I could go directly from the remap into the roughness and I could tweak the values here, but I found it quite useful to be able to think of both of these areas of, as having separate values. Uh, so this will be the pig value here and this will be the roughness value for my decal. And actually, maybe I want it the other way around in this case. Let's make the pig here. Let's let's rename this and we'll call this pig or, and we can call this uh, decal or, uh, we'll make the pig not shiny. So we'll put the roughness value up to one and we'll make the decal shiny. We'll put the roughness value down to zero. So we're saying there's no roughness, it is shiny. And let's put that out over to our preview material over here. And so here's the end result. And if I go back to pig or here and I was to put it to zero, you can see that that area is now uh, picking up some reflections because it has a very smooth surface. And if I push it out a little bit, so let's keep something, let's keep a little bit of roughness to it. And now this area here, if we push it out, now it's flat, now it's a bit more shiny and a little bit more wet. Maybe if I move around to the light, you can see the highlight just here and we can push it out or we can pull it back in again. So that will give it a more uh, paint-like feel to those particular areas. Uh, so I'm gonna set the color for the pig to be a darker value. Uh, something just to note here, if you hold the left mouse button, you can just move over these swatches and it'll update uh, automatically. So you can kind of keep your eyes on the viewport a little bit. Maybe if we go for something a little bit darker here. Yeah, maybe that one, that helps the decal to kind of stick out just a little bit more. Uh, let's go back over to our decal here and play with this. Oh, I seem to have named these badly. This is in fact pig, uh, pig or, and this is decal, oops, decal or. Let's just try that again. Yeah, so this is controlling the pig. So let's make the pig a little bit more matte here. And let's make our decal as shiny as we can get it. And now, yeah, now it's starting to feel a little bit more like a sticker, maybe, or something like that. Just to wrap up, I don't currently see the Texture Mask Paint workflow being a painter replacement. It's not interactive enough, but I do see it being quite useful for decals. As an added bonus, we can create our own decals within Cops, which allows for a lot of customization. The particular workflow with the Texture Mask Paint means that it is more brush-based or more artist-based, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, which means, of course, that we lose out on proceduralism. So if you needed to paint an awful lot of these, I wouldn't uh, be recommending you do it by hand. But in terms of being able to place the stuff just where you want it, it's a pretty good option. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.